Hey, what is going on guys? Tone here, and this is the last episode that had uh, subpar audio, so I am reshooting it with some retroactive commentary, like I have also done with episodes 16 and 17. Um, so we just got through a very long, you know, tough slog of research for our slow combat build. Um, a very slow walk when you're getting bombarded with assaults and patrols constantly um, but here we are in quarantine finally a research branch and this is a fun one um, research branches are possibly my favorite part of the game they're a lot of fun so the research branches are quarantine and testing and then there's the, the super research branch i guess you could say is um section seven so quarantine and testing end up on minus three and minus two uh, I guess we already knew where testing was here. Um, I don't know, remember where we got that. Probably a derelict log or um, maybe a forced tunnel hack early in the game. I don't remember if like any of Zhirov's terminals or anything gives you that. But uh, we knew testing was on minus two. So quarantine was guaranteed to be on minus three here. And then the way S7 works is it can be a branch from either quarantine or testing. But it'll always be after quarantine. So if quarantine is on minus two then you know s7 is guaranteed to be on minus two uh, but if quarantine's on minus three like it is here then testing or i'm sorry s7 is going to be guaranteed to be on minus three or minus two and if you find out s7 is on minus three that means quarantine is guaranteed to be on minus three and testing is on minus two and i believe dm will give you the s7 location so there's a few um little bits there you can you can use it to decipher the the world map, um, how it's generated for your game. Um, so our Centrium Heavy Treads, one of the pairs is down to 15 integrity here. Um, so it's a good thing that we do have some backup legs. We're probably going to have to swap out of treads here pretty soon. So what Quarantine's got in it is a bunch of alien artifacts. Um, very cool items. You can get some cool stuff here like the Sigix Broadsword is definitely a favorite of people's. Um, it's a regenerating two-slot melee weapon that does a ton of damage. Um, it's got a slow delay, um, but it, it basically acts as both armor and a melee weapon. It's got high coverage, high-ish integrity, and it it's self-regenerating, kind of like the regenerative armors you can find. So we generate in the top left here, and both quarantine and testing, you'll always generate in either the top left or the bottom left. The exit will be in the top right or bottom right. And the map is actually twice as long, um, if you look at the borders um, from left to right, as the quarantine or testing area actually uses up. The other half of that is dedicated to the S7 um, entrance hallway, if that generates on your map. Um, so it's not quite as big as it looks. And then if you spawn on the top left or the bottom left, the opposite left corner is going to have another um, prefab area. So in quarantine, that would house the Sigix containment pod, which is like a quest item thing. And then in quarantine, or in testing, it'll have the um, Seagemp, which is the quest item for the quest that Zhirov gives you. So straight away, um, there's a lot you can learn about the map. And since the map's pretty small, it's actually pretty easy to find the exit here. Um, so even on a combat build where you're slow and you saw how tough research was, getting into one of these, even if you don't have time to spend on this floor, if you don't have the luxury of staying here because you your build is beat up, um, if your alert is still way too high even after changing floors, which drops your alert a little bit, um, you can usually get out of these floors um, just using even that small amount of map sense that I just shared and that knowledge of just how the maps are generated, you can usually get off of this floor easier than you could like the second half of a research floor. Um, so if you're in trouble, sometimes dipping out here is not a bad idea. Um, now it looks like I was just drawing attention to my system corruption. There are some uh, difficulties in these research branches. Um, they are pretty tough areas to get through. Now one of them is there are researchers um, navigating and hidden out throughout the place. Now, if you take a hostile action next to a researcher, um, basically, if you use any weapon... Um, oh, I want to make a note right here. So I lost my signal interpreter, and we're corrupted. So my sensors have a bunch of red flags. So that's why there's like a guy up in the top left. 
that it's showing us, um, but that's not actually there. It's a corruption thing. Um, so when you're corrupted, scanners um, are, or sensors, I should say, are far less effective. Um, as long as, you, assuming you don't have um, a signal interpreter, so that's an issue that we have. But yeah, um, researchers, to get back to uh, what we were talking about. Yeah, they don't like it if you shoot a weapon near them or if you use a melee weapon, if you're just like digging a wall or something, they get mad. Um, which gets tough because sometimes they guard or they often guard good loot that you have to break open a shell to get to. Um, so you often have to break it open from outside of their line of sight. And actually, it's good to have a thermal weapon here so you can usually break it from outside of the room. You hit the the wall and then you shoot the shell from outside of the room. That's usually what you want to do to, to get past them in that manner. But what happens if they do see you shooting something and you do get a warning? Um, thankfully, it's a very nice um, quality of life slash UI um, kind of deal that Cogmind does have in it. Um, but they will go hostile towards you and they'll try to scan you and if they scan you bad things happen um, that's when you get trackers and combat programmers um, the so-called intercept squads um, will start chasing you so at five percent or higher system corruption you can misfire your guns that's why i took off all my weapons and only have a great axe on because you can't misfire a melee weapon um, and I probably don't need to do that until we actually see one of the pro or the researchers, but I'm just being a little safe here, I guess. I think our goals here are probably to purge our alert a lot. I feel confident enough to get to the exit without having to use um, locate exits. Branch access points are no good in the research branches, by the way. The only branch you can get to from either quarantine or testing is Section 7, and that actually doesn't even show up with the branch access points hack. Yeah, we're going to get tracking Trojans on all of these terminals since I don't have sensors. I don't have signal interpreters. I'm corrupted, so the sensors aren't that useful. Ooh, I just noticed we stepped on a trap walking into this room, and my corruption spiked from 9 to 14%. It is not very good. Well, I guess that question mark is the watcher that is jamming us. I don't use sensors without signal interpreters that often. Nope, he's down there, actually. That was just a, a false flag from the my corruption. There is one of the researchers we've been talking about. Looked like I was going to dig through, but I didn't want to... Oh, we just got more corrupted from 14 to 18 now. The room is brutal. I thought I was going to go through there, but I noticed I was going to get locked in by the engineers, and I thought differently of it. <laughs> I guess I was worried there might be enemies in there and a researcher, which would have been a bad situation. Now, I would love to kill the operator so I could get his corruption cleaner. This room has researchers, it has an explosive machine, or a bunch of explosive machines, it has a watcher. Uh, not very good stuff. I was looking for a way to dig into that room to the right, but I can see just from the data that our terrain scanner is giving us that it looks like it's a four tile dig from the, the corner of that room and that we're standing in the doorway to. And there's a researcher. What just happened? Right, we lost our sensor array. I think we stepped on a trap. Trigger Tesla on trap. Rough. So we stepped on... Wow, traps are destroying us. We just went from 9 to 18% corruption um, from a trap. We just exploded a bunch of stuff in this room. We lost our sensor array and our great axe, our melee weapon that we were using to dig. 
Um, wow, that was rough. We are not off to a good start on this map so far. Great Maul, a backup melee weapon for us. It's a really big terminal. Um, I don't know if we're going to get any hacks on that. It's probably security level 3. Yeah, I should have done the track first, and we got it off anyways. Botnet is at 6% on this thing. Figure we might try and get a shot off at that, uh, that trap location, since uh, there are probably more traps in this room, and there's still explosive machines left. Two watchers running around, we got that researcher in the top right, some programmers, and another operator in the bottom left. And we know that there are um, reinforcements coming to the the room just to the right. Looks like that watcher and programmer were just in range of each other for him to ping them. So now we have a programmer coming to us. So now we have the decision of where to fight this guy. And we don't want to be in range of this researcher like we are now. Uh, we don't want to be in a position where we can shoot the machines. I go to the top right, which would be my ideal position, I think. It's in the corner of that room. Um, that programmer is going to get a few shots on us. He's a lot faster than we are. He's probably moving around 50 speed or so. so three tiles to R1. Um, he's probably going to get shots off on us while we try to get to that corner in the room to the top right. And there's a chance that he could miss and hit that machine, which would not be good. So I think I'm going to risk walking through the... These destabilized earth tiles that got destabilized from the explosion and yeah, see where I'm pointing. Go fight them up there. It looks like I'm about three moves from being essentially blocking his line of sight. And then we can fight him from up there. Interesting that he did not alert the other programmer down there. They looked like they were a, a patrol, but only one seems to be coming for us. Unless the other one's wrapping around for some reason. Also note that I was walking back through the area where everything blew up because I know there aren't any traps up there. Um, because when you when the floor explodes, the traps get removed as well. If I stayed walking around the, the south side of that room, I could have hit another trap. Could have corrupted us more and could have exploded these machines more. All stuff we don't need. Our lord is probably... I mean, I've been assuming it's kind of high here. But we haven't seen any assaults, um, so it's probably below a certain threshold. Or we're just getting super lucky somehow. After all that time we spent on the last floor, I really have no idea how we never got any assaults. Ooh, I just thought of something. You can take, um, make like stat dumps, like score. It's basically like your end game score log, but it's like a, a mid game thing. Kind of like what you can do in DCSS. I wonder if you can learn your alert from that. Um, that would be exploitative. When that first got it, or got added, you could learn things like, you could learn um, unidentified items in your inventory using that. And you could also determine what exits were that you didn't know about in game. Um, so this was when it was still in um, pre-testing. And those are a couple things I noticed. Um, they got patched out pretty quickly. Um, but there are a few things you are able to exploit with that. Basically giving you more information that you could not get in-game. But I wonder if the your alert is another thing that didn't get picked up.
to 19% corruption. We got one more point from that programmer. Now, any room in these research branches can have something like super nice in them. It's pretty good to, to look around. The train scanning helps a lot because you can usually determine if any of these rooms are good. Um, because usually you can, there's like a specific kind of type of machine or shell that houses the good equipment. Um, it looks like those grunts over on the right are the reinforcements. Going to check out that terminal. Okay, so it looks like I'm trying to shoot the Watcher with my penetrating weapons. Probably going to try and do the same thing with the Operator. And then I'm using the Molecular Deconstructor to cut through these walls. I don't know if that machine is explosive or not. It doesn't tell you that through walls, unfortunately. we're just going to go through for this engineer it comes up and <laughs> makes everything difficult for us although that molecular deconstructor is causing a mess so he might be busy for a little while i can see the corner of that machine now and it indeed is not explosive And we know there's nothing good in that room on the left because um, it just has like normal machines in it. Looks like I am deciding to go back to the right. Oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm tr I'm pulling the grunts into this starting corridor. I don't want to fight them in the in the open in general because a researcher could come out. And also, those machines are explosive. I don't want to have those explode or to raise alert and yeah, you know, make more of a mess, possibly hurt us. So I'm pulling them back here, which is a pretty safe place. Dead end, so it's not likely that anything random like wanders into it. It's actually a really good place to draw people into and fight them. Drop the matter compressor because I was getting low. Automatically refill it off the floor. I think I was trying to get some matter off of that guy. Looks like we can fill our, our matter compressor. A lot, a lot of matter on the floor, though. Oop, I almost left the matter compressor behind. I have a really bad habit of doing that. I've lost like the, the super battery exiles item. <laughs> To recyclers by doing that. I've actually lost the, the the supersonic drone as well doing that on a run where it was actually super useful. I was playing this data conduit run where I was trying to not get intercepts called on me at all. Um, and that basically means that you have to get through... The heck am I... Oh, I determined that that guy's terminal is that big green one. So I was just destroying that before we can get to it. Good move. 
Um, but yeah, I was playing this run where you basically can only move like a hundred steps or so before you want to get off the floor. Um, but otherwise you can spend as much time like standing still as you want. Um, so I was using the supersonic drone to map out the floor a lot. It was super valuable. Um, but I didn't realize that I left the, the drone bay on the floor and then it got eaten up. <laughs> so I couldn't take it onto any other floors. It was sad. So I am recognizing this prefab right now. So a lot of these alien artifacts, some of them are random and some of them have specific room layouts. And this machine is for a specific alien artifact. And that terminal would have data on it that also tells you what that is. Um, but it's also a level one terminal, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, this is the subatomic replicator, which is very, very, very nice. What this does, you can actually use that on the ground and it'll self-identify if there's nothing laying on the ground. But if you equip that, which consumes it, well, while you're standing on top of an item, it'll duplicate the item you're standing on top of. Incredible. You can use that on a lot of items that are like one of a kind, essentially. I think I'm joking about duplicating the, uh, the super weapon. Only we knew sooner we could have uh, evolved 12 slots, 12 weapon slots to double fire that. Trying to get through here, but these, uh, these engineers are not having it. I had a melee weapon so I could just walk through, um, but we're stuck using the, the molecular deconstructor here. And I can't fire, if I fire that from a dugout tile, it destabilizes the tile on Risk Haven. That, that happens anytime you, you shoot from a dugout tile. If you use melee weapons, you are safe. But we lost our melee weapon at the beginning from that explosion, unfortunately. Our build's pretty good at killing stuff. Improved KE pens, and then a couple of nice support utilities like the core analyzer, target analyzer. Armor integrity analyzer doesn't help against a lot of the stuff we're fighting, but sentries or behemoths, it does a lot. I just shot him with the molecular deconstructor. Something cool about the molecular deconstructor is that it preserves the salvage very well most of the time. Although that guy didn't drop anything I wanted from him. I was looking for hackware and a, cl a corruption cleaner. Okay, we're going to try and dig through again. Pulse Thruster Array, one of my favorite mid-game flight. Oh, you can use that late-game too, flight units. Arrays are kind of slow, relatively. But the slowness is twofold. They don't have um, prototype flight speed, so they're base speed 40. And they're two slots, so you don't get the um, speed modifier bonus for equipping two flight units. It would normally be another minus three speed. They're very efficient on energy and heat upkeep for partially the same reason, because there's only one instead of two units per for the slots. Um, but also they have a nice support bonus. Um, so you can carry a lot if you equip a couple of those. I like them quite a bit. Advanced signal interpreter is what I think that said. 
Uh, too bad we lost our sensors. Um, otherwise, we would be back in business. Man, I feel like we got kind of boned. <laughs> Losing our sensors, our digging tool. We had our signal interpreter shut off to begin with. Um, if you take enough shots, which you probably will as a combat bot, you'll, you'll lose all that low chance stuff eventually. Um, it's been pretty untimely for us here. Now, we've, now it seems we've replaced our signal interpreter, but we do not have our sensor array anymore. A lot of the lower level sensor arrays are not very good. Basically want long range or experimental. I'm trying to save time from like walking around and also from like like being exposed in like that corridor to the top so I dig through here. This is a pain. There's a ton of green bots. And we've been spotted. Again, if I wasn't using the molecular deconstructor, I could have dug through there. I would have been able to step onto that tile and walk through and we probably wouldn't have been spotted. Except for the engineers, which I guess they're not going to call reinforcements now because it looks like they repaired everything. There's actually a fantastic place to fight. Well, if I decide to use my penetrating weapons. And a random ARC walked up. Misery loves company. Yeah, long, narrow corridor, penetrating weapons. Our, our build is pretty good for the situation. Is that another guy? He must have been from one of the other uh, two patrols squads that were already fighting. You can see that room on the bottom right is a, a prefab with an alien artifact, I think. I believe it's a random one, though. Uh, this guy has core shielding, so we can't crit him. Those guys are really annoying for crit builds. Ooh, okay. I guess they were still repairing because we penetrated and hit the guy and they're sending the, we hit the engineer and he's sending more more units unfortunately looking for his sensors but he didn't drop them random programmer Somewhere an operator got alerted. So we're dealing with those reinforcements as well. A low on matter, so I'm about to throw in the tractor beam and suck up everything in this uh, this corridor. Dang, we just got like 500 matter. That was awesome. 450 or so. Yeah, tractor booms can be pretty nice for builds like this. Check this out. Hackware. Experimental matter compressor. Oh, we already have one. We don't need two of those. Not not for our build. When I did the the quintuple multi-rail build, I I had to use like three of those to get me through the end game. Prototype ballistic cannon. That can only be a few things. Can either be any of the hard cell cannon um, variants, I believe, R2 slot, and also the tri-rail accelerator, which is probably what that is. 
It's actually sweet weapons. No luck on that. Would have been a great place to get a tracking Trojan. Yep, tri -real Accelerator. Three shots, 20 to 35 each. 1% crit, but with our target analyzer, it comes up to 9%. The three 9% crit shots, not bad. Our other guns are like almost gone, so I think we're probably just going to switch to these for a little while. There were six recoil. We mitigate, I think it was six. Oh, I didn't realize we're down to. We're just running on three treads now because I lost my other um, set of Centrium Heavy treads. If we swapped to legs, we would get a huge recoil um, like debuff, essentially, because our treads mitigate recoil, which is what makes them great for this build. Um, so right now we're minus three recoil on our, all our guns. So these two tri accelerators are still minus three recoil each, down from their minus six. Oh man, that improved Concelerator is great with these as well. Did I raise it from like 24 to 28 or something? No, it was more than that, like 21 to 28. That's pretty sweet. But yeah, so we still are taking a bit of an accuracy hit from recoil from these two, um, but it's not that bad. You know, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, we have to keep going somehow. These will be fun to use for a while. They're not guns, so we don't get the gunslinging perk. Oh, it looks like I was stocking up on gamma rifles at some point in case I... I was already planning ahead for losing all my kinetic weapons. Um, so I guess I was going to try and do a gamma rifle build. Which I've never really done before, but it should be pretty dang effective. They do pretty good EM damage. You have a, a high supply of them from all the programmers you have to fight. It apparently used to be super strong, but EM got nerfed um, a version or two ago. And... Every EM weapon across the board had double the energy cost. It looks like I'm going to start dropping those now that I have six slots of uh, kinetic cannon. The tri -rail accelerators had what? Like minus eight, uh, minus five um, salvage. I think I just pulled it up actually. That's per projectile. So you're not getting anything essentially, from those encounters. Oh, when I threw that leg on, I had a, a free slot for some reason. Um, so the leg, we're not going to activate it. It's not providing speed or support, but it is going to act as armor, and it frees up an inventory slot. And I just identified, I recognized, at least, the prefab that's in the room to our left. Thank you, Terrain Scanner. That is the core reset matrix prefab. That is guaranteed on quarantine. I think I've heard a case or two people saying that they've had maps where it didn't generate um maybe that's true there are some like very obscure instances where certain quote unquote guaranteed things do not generate sort of like how the garrison that you can find on certain smaller maps like minus eight materials um isn't always there it's they're like 99 percent guaranteed though um so this is essentially guaranteed in quarantine and it's a very special item I think it's pretty good for our build. It basically like makes Cogmind part um, alien, if that makes sense. It wipes your memory, so you forget the every part identity you have, um, any intel you have. So it's really bad for, I believe, Riff. It'll wipe that. Um, if you did Data Conduit, which gives you a bunch of like cool intel, you lose that. 
don't remember how it plays with imprint. Oh geez, we gotta fight some hunters now. Um, but what it gives you is it auto-identifies all alien items, and it shows you their locations on the map. Which is very nice when you're playing a slower combat build um, here in quarantine. Because you can look at all the items on the map and decide what you want to get. And those alien items are like the really nice items, so um, that's really cool. And beyond that, it wipes your corruption. And we are very corrupted right now, and I would love a corruption wipe. So I think we're going to go and grab that. That's annoying. The tri rails don't penetrate. We knocked him back to a position where we can't hit him now, and we're in siege mode. Unfortunately, it looks like the tri rails can pen or can destroy that wall outright, some percentage of times. I throw on the improved accelerator to improve our odds of that happening. Nice. Destroyed the wall and killed him in the same volley. You notice how they leave left like no loot? Yeah, that's what happens when you use kinetic cannons. That's why I try not to use them. You'll run out of matter so fast. You just use only kinetic cannons. And also if you're like using guns to from enemy drops or like you're trying to get their legs or something just to sustain your build. Um Using kinetic cannons, you'll you won't you won't get any of that stuff. Okay, engineers, get out of our way. So annoying. We just missed twice and opened up all the walls. So now instead of having a nice clean choke point, uh, we have to fight all three of these guys at once. Another downside of kinetic cannons, they actually destroy the walls. Um, kinetic guns do not. They just penetrate them. Yeah, we have a pretty big minus um, accuracy modifier due to our corruption. And these guns are fun, though. They're tearing shit up. <laughs> They're knocking things back. Ooh, we got programmers again. Slow combat, guys. Just fight after fight after fight. Leave one fight and you start another. Siege mode does not help that. So you have to wait five turns after a fight, too. And another random troll. Looks like this is... Might be the only corridor connecting these two parts of the map, which is probably why it's so busy. It's really annoying. This would actually be super difficult if that is the case on a, on a flight to get through. There's one choke point that's super busy. Because you usually just want to evade stuff, but you're forced to engage um, when you have choke points like this. Or bottlenecks, I should call it. I don't know if those machines are explosive. I'm going to take out this programmer without also destroying the machines, which is not an easy thing to do when your volley shoots six projectiles that can destroy walls. It is explosive. I wonder if we hit it. These engineers hate me right now. Wonder they're always calling reinforcements on us. Oh, I've been using the advanced force field. Um, yeah, that saves us a lot of damage. It gives us a lot of sustain. Oh, so I just, these guys were annoying me, so I just used my treads to slam into one of these enemies, and the researcher saw it. 
It actually, it gave us a warning, but I thought the warning was because it always gives you a warning when you're going to run over um, a non-combat bot. And I didn't realize it was actually warning me about the researcher. So we were about to get scanned, but we actually killed him in one volley before he could scan us, it looks like. Got lucky there. Getting scanned may have... Uh, I don't know if it would have ended our run. It would not have been good, that is for sure. Yeah, I'm basically going over here just for the, the core reset matrix at this point. I should have realized what that was when, as we were approaching it. These are like little outpost pockets um, that have just three guys in them. It can be various types of guys. It might have three programmers in it. I think it can even have specialists, which are a, a unit type that you don't actually see a whole lot of. And this one just had a couple of grunts in it. I should have known that was there on the approach, although I'm not sure if we could have really avoided it anyways. That blue tile on the bottom right looks like another um, shell that's housing probably an alien artifact prototype. <laughs> we just misfired because we were corrupted and we destroyed a uh, a recycler. We just like shot behind him by accident and someone died. Sorry, dude. <laughs> but I will take advantage of that and hover up that uh that matter with my tractor beam. Cool. So yeah, this um machine always holds the CRM. And something a lot of people want to do is take that CRM, and if you're not going to even use it, bring it to the Scanalyzer to identify it. Because that way, you know that any other artifact you find um, will not be a CRM, any random one, because you already have the CRM identified. That lets you just like randomly gobble down other alien artifacts. I think this is where we stop for the time being, so I'm going to pause this here. Um, but yeah, so like that is one that people often don't want to to use by accident. So that's why it's good to put it in the scanalyzer, um, so you can figure out what it is and prioritize alien artifacts that aren't the CRM. Um, you'll pro you may have noticed I took a screenshot of the entire map um, a minute ago once I walked into this room because part of the memory wipe is that you forget all the map data on the floor you're on. Now we, in the grand scheme of things, did not <laughs> explore that much. Um, so I could have, I don't need that screenshot. We can navigate through here fine. It's just basically around the corner again. This is back where we were. And this is, it looks like another dead end. Actually, in the bottom left here is going to be the, um, the Sigix containment pod. Actually, is there more to this? I wonder if I look at the uh, alien artifacts. Because it's going to reveal them. Oh, that's funny. Um, we still have the tracking treasure on that terminal as well. Cool. So I uh, sense two artifacts in the vicinity. Um, that's actually super weak. This quarantine only had the phaser director and phase armor. Okay. Um, and yeah, there's nothing else on the map. All right, I'm actually going to pause here. So that's a super weak um, quarantine. Only four alien artifacts, and one of them is the guaranteed CRM. Hardly counts. Um, now, one of them was the subatomic replicator, which is amazing. Um, I'd actually like to check this now, but I feel like there's usually a couple more items in there. And the phase armor and the phase redirector, um, those are two different flavors of an item that redirects your um, damage you take to your core, which is actually really cool in a lot of situations. And I think that got those got added um, partially due to an idea that I had on the uh, Discord. Um, I was just uh, contemplating how how useful it would be if you could like use your core as a resource um, in certain situations. Because it feels like a waste if you go to the next floor and you have max core. I don't know, first world problems. Um, but that's kind of what those both do. 
to one extent or another. And I'm sure we'll get into that next episode when we actually pick them up or get near them again. Um, but yeah, so this is really good for helping you find all the cool alien artifact prototypes on the floor. Um, but this is a super weak quarantine. We got the, the subatomic replicator, which is actually like super, super strong, but um, nothing else. So a um, little disappointing. I mean, those two items are cool, but th there's a lot cooler stuff. I was kind of hoping for a core stripper, which is another really cool item. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff you can get, um, but too bad we didn't get a lot of that stuff. But yeah, this is where we uh, stopped for the, the day, so we'll call it here. And yeah, next episode will be back to normal. Um, me doing live commentary as I play with knock on wood, no... <laughs> No audio issues, so um, we'll pick up right where we left off there with episode 19. So I hope uh, these three episodes that I went back and and uh, you know picked up this retroactive commentary were not in vain, and that they were uh, helpful for you guys. And I hope they were accessible and it was noticeable for people who preferred this um, that they are available. Um, we started watching through the other ones or whatever. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And tune in for the next episode, episode 19. I'll probably get that up tomorrow again, um, just so we can keep these episodes rolling. So see you guys. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.